Hi, this is day eight of our camping trip around California coast. Today we're staying here at a place called Wheeler Gorge Campground, Los Padres National Forest. And down the street south, about eight miles, is the town of Ojai, beautiful town of Ojai. And up north, this is Highway 33. Up north, about 40 or 50 miles, you hit Taft and Maricopa. This is called a transitional oak woodland. Lots of pine trees, oak trees. We have our sycamores. All right, and I'm gonna take you around the campground. We'll spot some of these beautiful trees, some birds. I'll show you the uh, campground spaces, what they look like. Up here we have some mistletoe is our camp host. All right, usually if you're already registered, you just go straight to your campsite. We have acorn woodpeckers, nuttles woodpeckers. We have Stellar's Jays. Anyway, here's the information board. You want some information? But on the back, kind of what you really need, here's a little trail map, okay? So we are here called Wheeler Gorge. Down here is Ojai. Tomorrow we're going to take this trail up here called Ortega Trail. But there's lots of other trails to drive through all throughout Ojai. Absolutely beautiful here. Here's a couple animals you might encounter. Of course our acorn woodpeckers with the red heads. Here's a little black bear. We saw one today. Turkey vultures, deer, mountain lions. Mati Liha Poppy, Morning Glories, variety of Morning Glories, different yuccas, okay, like Our Lord's Candle, right? Lupines, Black Sage. This guy's a monkey flower. Let me call him a sticky monkey flower. We got coyotes, red tail hawks, raccoons, bunch of snakes, lizards, roadrunners. We got a special guy, he's called an arroyo toad. You'll find him in the dry creek, even pond turtles. And we have a bunch of nests up here. These might be from uh, morning doves. They like to hang out under the eaves. All right, let's keep looking around. Here's a uh, little willow. He's green, light green, dark green, light green. He likes to flutter in the wind. All right, let's see. We have restrooms here. Other than that, it's really dry. There's no water, no electricity, no RV flushing, just some uh, restrooms. So this is space number three. And I originally reserved this spot because it's the only spot available, but look at this. It's pretty small, it's slanted, it's on the highway. It's not a good spot. So we change, we got space 13, I'll show you. Here's space number five. And on the back of five is a creek, but it's still pretty tight. You got four and five together. There's trash here. You just dump your trash. And today the place is totally reserved. So it's walk-in only. Oh, here we have a morning dove. Right, when it's reserved, they'll put uh, reserved up here. That way you know you can't take it. However, if you show up, there's a spot that's open, you can go check in with the host and uh, ask for a different site. That's what we did. So there's two loops. This is uh, one loop, site 29 to 71. This way, that's also the exit. And up this way is the other loop for sites up to 28. Here's site number seven. So there's water here, but it's restricted for, of course, the park rangers. You can't access. Now here's space eight. And uh, there's no rhyme or reason to, you know, on the road, not on the road. It's simply how they pop up in order. So sometimes even numbers are on the road. Sometimes even numbers are not on the road. So uh, this is 10 and nine combined. Don't get a combined space because you never get privacy. Lots of wiggly driving. 
Be careful if you have a large trailer. And more oaks. So this space is number 11. Okay, easy to get into. You've got some shade. Uh, it's pretty tight with this one here, which of course is number 12. And this one here, we just, you know, we wanted to pick it and we decided not to because see, there's no, uh, no shade. All right. So if you need shade, don't pick uh, 11. And uh, see what up here we got. Beautiful oak still, right? We got poison oak too. And these guys are like purple. Stay away, there's a ton of poison oak up here. Poison oak is not an oak, by the way. It's related to our sumac. And our cashews, like laurel sumac or lemonade berry. Okay, sugar sumac. Sugar bush, those guys. So here's our campsite. We are in space number 13. 13 is a fantastic spot. Over here, we have a Toyon. Toyon's real common. All of our chaparrales, okay? Heteromillies are beautifolia. It's called Christmas tree, a Christmas berry bush. Our Christmas berry, our Christmas holly, all sorts of variations of this plant. It used to be really, really common out in Los Angeles canyons. And the original center, settlers, they called it the holly, although it's got no relation to a holly. Little holly berries will grow here. All right. And it looks like holly, so they called it holly, but it's totally different uh, than our European holly. But people living out in Los Angeles, they loved it so much, they named the town Hollywood after this plant, our Toyon. There you go. So here's number 14, 15, 16, 17. They all loop around this little turn here. We've got trash. So let's take a look at one of the restrooms real fast. All right, male, female, restrooms. There's nothing real exciting about them. Just a open pit, open vault. Okay. So just be careful. Don't drop anything down there. Not on the road. Of course, we have California buckwheat, Aragonum pasiculatum. No chaparral is complete without this plant. All right, pasiculatum. He's got fascicles or clusters of leaves that work himself up the stem sort of alternately those spirally and a cluster is called a fascicle and that's why they call me fasciculatum until he gets to the top where you have these pretty flowers the bees love california buckwheat all right everybody should know that one like so this site is 18 it's probably one of the best sites but we couldn't get it it's already reserved a private drive all the way down here we have direct access to the creek wow we got a lizard down there too he's looking at us all right the lizard right there okay might be a fence lizard or a whiptail Okay. Here's a little ground squirrel for us. So this guy here, he's called a Stellar's J. Now if you're closer to the ocean, at the lower altitudes, you always find scrub jays. But up here, as you go more inland, at higher altitudes, elevations, you get Stellar's Jays. He kind of looks like a scrub jay, but he has this black crown on the top of his head. Here we got a little acorn woodpecker in our sycamore tree. 
nice shiny red head there. So this guy here, he's pecking away at the limb. He's looking for insects to come out and have a little lunch. The site was number 18? 18. It has another private run to the creek. Another private. So look at this. 18. All the way up here. Private all the way here. Private, private. All the way up here. Unbelievable. Right? So Toyon. It's a bigger one. There's our uh, holly leaf cherries. What else we got here? This site, I believe, is uh, number 19. Here's number 30 or 20. 20 is a good site, but it's on the other side of the creek and closer to the road. So a little give and take. All right, this is a fantastic shrub. It's huge. This guy's called holly leaf cherry. Prunus elicifolia. Some people say elicifolia. You can say elicifolia. That's fine. It's an evergreen shrub, small tree. He's like essential for our California chaparrales. Hot, dry summers and wet winters. So he's called a Islay plant too. And his berries are so big. Here we go, right? These berries are called choke berries. Because they're absolutely huge. Look at these uh, leaves. They're just like holly. There we go. They're all serrated like that. And they're curly. All right, a little elongated, almost sometimes even squared off a little bit. Like a rectangle. Like a European holly. Huh. Anyway, coyotes, bears, birds, they love those chokeberries. But I don't think so much for humans. Here's a Toyon. Western sycamores. Now don't mix up Western sycamores with American sycamores. So American sycamores come from the East Coast and they're the ones you find at the shopping centers because they're much easier to grow and they have a longer trunk that shoots up without getting all messy. And these guys here, you grow them in your yard and they drop the seeds. They just get mushed up in your lawnmower or you step on them when you're barefoot. All right, it's a western sycamore. This guy's pretty common too. He's got uh, like big sticks that come out of his main stem. Like here's his main stem, big sticks, and then he flowers at the top. Okay, it's called a flowering ash. Fraxinus dipotala. Okay, or dipotala. So he's adapted out here. He drops all his leaves in the summer so he doesn't lose all his evaporation and water from the leaves. He's got chlorophyll in his stems. And that's the way he sur survives out here. He's got these legumes for seed pods. This guy's all twirled up and opened. See that? It's called a flowering ash. So this guy here, this is called an arroyo willow. All right. So he looks like a willow. He's got these lance-shaped leaves. He's dark on one side, he's light on the other, and he floats around and flutters like a willow. He's called arroyo because he likes to live by the creek. Actually, he really likes to live by dry creek. In California, a dry creek, we call it an arroyo. So uh, he's called a Salix laziolepis. Comes from a family called Salicaceae. That's where you get salicylic acid. So if you have a little headache or something, you can kind of just chew on the leaves or crumble them up. Works kind of like aspirin. This guy's really big. Wow. Really woody. Branches all over the place. See that way down there? That's one plant all the way up here. So he grew too big. He fell over. Arroyo Willow. What else do we have here? 
We've got coffee berry with some berries. Uh, did I show you this guy? This one to you already? Yeah. All right, see? Coffee berry. He's got pretty berries on him. Okay. Look at these acorns. Okay, this is our... Wow. This is our Quercus agrifolia variation. Berber idifolia. Okay. He's got acorns. This little cup right there that holds the acorn. He's like a, this inland shrub plant. Wow. So he's really cool. So of course he's related to our coast live oak trees. This is what he looks like after he loses his acorn. And the woodpeckers go crazy for these acorns. Okay. All right, this plant here is a western mountain mahogany. Cercocarpus betuloides. So he likes to grow all alongside our toyon in the chaparral up here. It's got extremely hard wood. Look at that. This guy looked like caught on fire almost. Wow. Just like all the mahoganies, he's got this really hard wood. He's a member of the Rosaceae family. So it's flowers. Let's see here if I find the flowers. Well, here are the leaves. The leaves are very tiny leaves. They're ovate, right? And they're a little serrated. Okay, they're light on the bottom, dark on top, and they got little glossy hairs, hair-like structures. Help keep it uh, from losing water through evaporation. So here are the flowers. They're almost seeding like this here. So the seeds will develop with little tails on them, little fluffy tails, and when the wind blows, they'll blow away. So western, Mountain mahogany. Okay, and the deer, they love it. And the seeds also, if the deer pass by, it'll kind of stick to their fur. They carry it across, you know, the chaparral somewhere else. It's great mahogany wood. There you go. Wow. We have so much cool stuff out here. So here we have space 25. It's pretty private. Got all the customary amenities here. Parking's fine. A little bit shaded in back. Of course, it's full of toyon and oaks and holly berry. But I don't see any poison oak. Kind of hear that? That's the road. That's 33. So when you're up here close to the road, you hear a little bit more. Here's our flowering ash. And here's 33, Highway 33. This guy's called a century bush, or century agave. Not a bush, it's an agave. So, uh, once his lifetime, here he is here, he'll shoot up this huge, huge stock. All the way up here, he'll flower. And you never know when he's going to do it. It might be 20 years old or 100 years old. That's why they call him a century plant. He's got spikes all over him. He's a spike, so you don't want to jump in this guy. Wow, that stock has got to be 25 feet high. Holy smokes. So this plant here is called a chamise or chamiso or a greasewood. He's Ananostoma fasciculatum. And like our buckwheat, he's got fascicles of leaves, work themselves up the stem until you get to the flowers and the seeds. So this guy's seeding right here. And the seeds are rather sterile. In fact, they only um, will propagate if there's a fire. So these guys love fires. And down here, what'll happen if there's a fire, it'll cut off the plant and it'll just kind of regrow from little tubulars underground. Help him out. It's called a greasewood because he's so greasy. It's 
called a chamis or chamiso or chamizo sometimes. Ananasma fasciculatum. We got more of our giant sycamores. Uh oh, this is bad stuff. This guy's a parasite. He's called Canyon Daughter. Big old filaments of just, you know, just parasitic mumbo jumbo. So, what he does, he's a parasite and he has no roots. And what he does is he just penetrates into the stem here sucks the host plant dry of all the nutrients. So this guy looks like he took over a uh, California buckwheat. So this buckwheat's a goner. Okay, and this guy also has no chlorophyll. See, he's not green. He's just brown. There's really nothing good about this little parasite we call Canyon Daughter. So here's number 26. It's, I don't think I recommend this site. It's pretty slanted. Even, uh, the picnic table and the barbecue and all that's a little slanted. But if you're here, there's plenty of room. It's pretty private. All right, more oaks here. And up here, I think we're getting to the end of this loop. But I'll just show you this loop. I won't show you the other loop. All right. This is number 27. It gets slopier. So the numbers get higher. And, uh, I thought we had number 28, but maybe it just stops at 27. So here's space 28. Now we couldn't get it because it's reserved and no kidding. Let's take a look at this. Super, super private benches. It's got ample parking, a little bit slanted on the upside, but look at this, all private back here. All right, another one of our oaks here, underneath it. And here's a stream, but this part's all dried up. So maybe not in July, maybe uh, in spring, yeah. this might be better. That's me. All right, let's take a look at the creek. Got anything down here? Hey, this grass here, it's called uh, valley grass, okay? It's Nasala pulchra. It's the state grass of California. Also called purple grass. Like you go to the uh, market and you want to buy it at, you know, the nursery, you call it purple grass. Anyway, it's the most common grass in California. That's why it's called the uh, state grass California, Nacella pulchra, or Nacella pulchra. Down here we have a creek. We got a bunch of dragonflies down here, Skimmers. and damselflies. Ooh, that's a big lice-looking crab. And we got some crawdads down here, maybe. Ooh. Oh, okay, we got uh, frogs here. This might be our arroyo toad. And we have striders here. These guys are the little guys that walk on water. But it's really cool. See that guy right there? So he's a tadpole. And he's going to turn into an arroyo toad. An arroyo, of course, this is called an arroyo. Seasonal Dry Creek, and um, maybe he'll be talking to us tonight. Wow. Oh, here's a strider. See this guy right here? He's called a strider. So look real closely here. Of course, we have our Arroyo Toad Tadpole there. Right here, let's see if you can see that very well. But that is a dragonfly larvae, and he doesn't have his wings yet to come out of the water. So he's down here. Once he comes out of the water, he'll eat all the mosquitoes. And we got some more down here. Let's see if you can see that with the reflection. Here's one of our striders up here. 
This is floating there. And here's a little bug on the water. Oh, under the water. And here's our little arroyo toad tadpole. Okay. Whew. Well, there you go. Hope you like that tour. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye. And no matter where you go in America, you can never get away from leaf blowers. Even way out in the boonies of Los Padres National Forest. Leaf blowers. They drive me crazy.